Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blog. Now we're talking about Sheen Kole again. And uh, as you know, Sheen is China and Kole is glue. And we're going to work with a few images here and some rip paper. And we're going to start just with a drawing. And just want to show you too uh, some of the previous work I did. And the drawing is all in the back here. Uh, we'll use it as a transfer. Uh, we're using charcoal today. And this paper is just, uh, and some of it's quite textural because it's been warped. And uh, it's just uh, rub off paper, you know, um, when you're rayering, rayering off your um, paint. And it can be quite interesting. So it's a nice way to reuse that. This would be a good uh, journal page. I did a small piece as well. And uh, so, and also here is uh, from the small uh, six by six plate uh, is, is just a ghost print. So, and we could easily place, you know, more sheen collet on there as well. But I have a plate prepared. Uh, this is, uh, now we're using our Createx uh, colors. These are monoprint colors. And I've had these qu quite a long time. And the blue is, uh, this is phthalo blue and it's really intense. I've had to um, put water on it and daub it off a couple of times now. And it's still, you can see it's really intense. Now it's water soluble and so we need that in order for us for the sheen collet for it to work. I have prepared some methyl cellulose uh, and it's, it's like um, 30 second of a uh, you know a teaspoon and you can I don't know if you can see the consistency. I've just added a tiny bit of water and it's a nice gluey consistency. I started some stuff last night and overnight it's set up and it's hard as gelatin so <laughs> so be careful with that stuff anyway um previously we used our uh, super matte medium but uh, today we're going to try this methyl cellulose all right so let's start with our drawing and uh, we're just going to do some random mark making we'll introduce some structure later on and we're just going to just, you know, do some wiggles, um, just sort of like a warm up exercise. Don't worry about what it looks like right now. This will transfer. So introduce some structure. And some tone. We're just wanting to have an interesting background here. You might want to see if, if some of the tone will transfer. So you might want to darken some areas. You can pick out some patterns here. As if this is going in. And this is In shadow, maybe. So a few areas of tone. Okay. And then you can maybe do some uh, spots just for interest. Squeaky. And then maybe some really dark lines. Trying not to squeak here. Okay. 
Josh's cats would be interested in that. <laughs> they have little toy mice that they chase around and they squeak as well. Which we should give a plug for. Uh, Josh has got a, a YouTube um, video under Wire Slave and he takes photographs and uh, videos of his cats. And they're really cute. You should, you know, check them out. Okay, we're, I think we're good. So I've put the paper on top of our drawing that's on top of the base that I've created in blue. And this is hopefully going to transfer. Yes, I think it looks really good. Okay, can set that aside. Now the next step is to place our sheen collet pieces, but we have to put the glue on them. And I had quite a few, and maybe we'll, I've got a, one of these papers here. And we can cut out a few more. So all I've done is uh, with Posca pen, I've just looked at some interesting areas and, you know, just drawn a random shape. You can do any shape you want. And then just added little holes in there. And you can, you know, do a variety of these. They start looking like little creatures. Sort of little bloppy things. <clears throat> maybe we can imagine that our blue is maybe an ocean bottom or something and these are strange creatures from the deep. <laughs> Just let your imagination run wild. <laughs> okay, so we cut out these things. And I guess uh, Josh will put a little interlude in because this will take a few minutes. So I have a little hole punch here and uh, you know, there's nothing really more therapeutic than punching holes in the things. <laughs> and if you want an odd shape, you can just keep punching out things until it's the shape you want. That looks pretty good. Maybe one here. Okay. So we have all these little pieces. And then... Now you put, figure out uh, which side is going to be uh, facing down, which is the good side, and the glue side is going to be like this. So this is a good side, that's the glue side. Okay. I don't know if we'll use them all, but now this has got two sides, and, but the blue is up. All right. So I've had a little brush, we have our methyl cellulose. And it's setting up really fast, so like I said, uh, you need very, very little methyl cellulose. So you have the choice of letting this dry because when you re-wet it, it will act like glue or you can just leave it which is what we're going to do because we're always short of time. So these pieces can act as structure or the lines of your drawing can act as structure. At some point you have to have a little bit of, uh, you know, some reason behind why you're doing what you're doing. Otherwise it just sort of looks like a mess. <laughs> The thing with um, non-objective work is that you're only working with the elements of design and 
art making. You don't have, you know, things like trees and, and uh, buildings and so forth as a reference point. So it, your reference point is the formal language of art making. You won't have much texture, but you might have line, direction, those kinds of things. Certainly we have color. Now it's just a question of placing everything. Now if you're careful you can see, now I might, I don't know if my light tape will help here. Yes, I can see, you know, my lines more clearly. So take your time positioning this. This is where some kind of thinking has to be involved here. So I'm just positioning these little creatures, whatever they are. No, this one doesn't seem to fit, so we just get rid of him. And that one is pointing out. <clears throat> Okay, so we have seven, which is a nice odd number. Now, uh, be careful with the mess of cellulose. I've been coughing quite a bit because it's, I just put a tiny bit in, but the particles are really fine. So I would suggest wearing a mask, uh, you know, if you put a little bit in a container because it, it really does get into the air. So best to be um, forewarned. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a piece of wet paper and then we'll Proceed to dry that, show you how to do that. So I have here a wet sheet of paper, you can see it dripping off. And we're just going to place it on a towel. And you just want enough to take the sheen off. You don't want to dry it too much. This is uh, multimedia paper, very close to printmaking paper. Reeves BFK is probably the best bet if you can get it. But this works pretty good. Okay, so I'll we'll bring back our plate. And then we're going to place our paper on top. And remember all our glue here is sitting on this side. Now that felt a bit dry here. You don't want to get any on the plate itself because then it'll stick to the plate and not to the paper. So placing it on. And now we wait until the paper is dry because that's when the glue activates and makes a connection with the paper that it's uh, behind. It won't take that long. Um, we have a fair amount of heat going on. So we'll put an interlude on and once it's dry, we will come back and uh, reveal our image. Now, you can sort of see how it's going to look this way. So you can see the marks, the graphite uh, transfer that we did and our little creatures I don't know what they're doing, but they're having a good time. <laughs> so we'll just wait for our reveal. It'll be very close to that. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> So while we're waiting for that first one to dry, um, let's just, uh, you know, proceed with uh, something a little bit different. And we have all these cutouts, so what, why not use them as a stencil? So we're just going to 
the hot button here. I'm not worried about the paint breaking up here. It's doing that anyway with this sort of daubing procedure. Now I'm using uh, Createx monotype um, monoprint colors as well, monotype, monoprint, uh, either one. Um, Createx, so. And it's a water soluble printmaking ink that gives you sort of a watercolor look uh, when you put it on a plexi plate and let it dry and then print it. Your paper does have to be wet. Just for interest, I'm mixing this um, fuchsia color with yellow. That blue and that um, fuchsia is a discord color, so uh, they will sort of fight each other in your composition. So you want to do a little bit more than that. Uh, just a third color, so it's not quite so glaring. And of course, you can add other textures if you want. And with a brush, um, you can add line. We can maybe add a little bit of black on the side here. We don't need a lot. A little, that's why I've had these for so long, because uh, a little um, of these Createx colors goes a very long way. You can add a little few marks. You can add eyes if you want, <laughs> if they are creatures. Um, Eyes can be almost anywhere. Have you ever seen a halibut <laughs> or a lot, lot of rockfish? Their eyes are on top of their head. It looks very strange. And then there's some insects that are um, have their eyes on long sticks. <laughs> So eyes can be unusual. All right. Now, again, <laughs> you have to wait for things to dry. So that's just the nature of the game. So I'll wash my brushes, we'll do an interlude and all right, well, we'll catch you in a minute. So we're just letting this dry. Uh, we're going to be ripping up this piece and it's just uh, deli paper, I think. And we have to wet this. It's all always, you know, your paper that you're printing with is always going to have to be wet. So, okay, I wanted to talk about the methyl cellulose a little bit. Um, it comes in a container like this. It's very dusty. And this is uh, used for printmaking, uh, not just printmaking, but um, uh, for marbling. So, and as I said, a little goes a long way. Your proportion is four tablespoons per gallon 
for marbling. So that's why we use such a small amount, you know, to glue the sheen collet pieces. We're going to rip up this paper. Now we have to be careful because it's quite dark and these are fairly dark. We have lots of light areas in here. So I'm going to probably just focus on little bits of this and that. So we'll start ripping and uh, So I just left the black paint in my brush. This way you can actually see the methyl cellulose more easily when I'm putting it on. And I've looked at which side is more interesting and then you turn it over and you do the back. We might make some of these pieces smaller. Let's see what happens. I think I mentioned that this is deli paper. So it's very thin. It, um, for a sheen collet, it would be perfect. The previous stuff that I was using uh, was just um, copy or bond paper. So it's a little heavier. <laughs> it is sticky. <laughs> All right, now behave yourself. Hmm. And what I'm going to do with the, this is bond paper, um, this piece that we're going to print onto, so it probably isn't very stable or sturdy. So I'm just going to wet it uh, by spraying it, using our towel to dry it a little bit. And this is pretty well done for printing. like those little creatures we're doing, except these are acting more like creatures. Curling up and being disobedient. <laughs> so we'll have to seriously discipline them by putting them on the plate and making them sit and stay. Again, you're looking for structure now, um, so don't forget you have these pieces, our little creatures behind. So give them a little bit of space. Um, like I said, we might have to rip these up a bit smaller. And you can overlap because the glue will stick to either side. Yet this one doesn't seem to have much methyl cellulose on it. If it dries on you, that's just fine. That's the whole point. So you're working with a wet piece. We'll rip this one. Uh, might use either one. Uh, cropping is good as I've said before so it doesn't have to go right to the you can go right over the edge you can cut it off after you can overlap onto your creatures if you want Nice. 
move this one over. Take it off a little bit. Now the nice thing about working with a gel plate rather than an etching press is that things will stay put on a gel plate. And of course, well, they do an etching press too because you're putting blankets and so forth on. And of course, etching presses, um, you may not have an opportunity to use one, so there may not be a, a place like a printing house. Um, so a gel plate is a good substitute as long as you know how to work with it. And uh, you just have to make compensation to some degree. Not all of it is the same. Okay. Now you look at, you know, you want somewhat random um, have to put glue on the underside of that when it overlaps. Okay, so I'm ready to just spray wet this thing, the spawn sheet. Now you have to be careful and you might need another sheet for it because you're actually reactivating the paint as well. And you don't want that on your towel. Not too much of the paint came up, it's good. Um, you just want to take any shiny spots off it. The paper is wet, but you don't want it to be too saturated. Okay. And we might have to spray the back. So we'll put this down. Now this dries very quickly and you have to really, your printing paper um, holds the water. Because the fibers are thicker. So I won't dab quite as much off here. This is on the wrong side anyway, so as long as it stays moist, we're good. All right, now we place this what uh, might dry quite a bit faster than the other one. It's already sort of setting up. So again, it's a waiting game. <laughs> but we should almost be ready for the first one. And you can see what it's going to look like. We see our creatures are showing up. They're a little pale, but interesting. They end up being a background. And there's our blue that should print really nicely. So now we just, now we wait. I think we're pretty dry now. Uh, I'm not crazy about methyl cellulose. I found that my matte medium worked a little bit better. I didn't have much trouble with the ones I showed you at the beginning of the video. Uh, just pulling up the last little bit and not sticking quite as well as I'd like. It is working. I think the gel plate, of course, has something to do with it because even though it's not sticking directly like glue, um, 
it does sort of grab things, so I'm just adding more methyl cellulose as I'm pulling it off so that it'll stay in place. I grabbed most of it, I, I, you know, I have to admit. Okay, we're getting there. Oops, and this one fell off. <laughs> but the ones that are sticking are pretty good. And we'll just place that one in the proper position. And stick it down. So our little creatures from the deep here. And we'll take a ghost print of this because it's also quite interesting. As you can see, there's a, a bit of a halo effect. And you can do something with that if you like or leave it, which is, you know, not unattractive. Or a little, you can crop off the top creatures. And it printed the background pretty good. So anyway, um, you need a release agent, of course. So just pour a little matte medium on here. Brayer it out. So for most of these, you'll have two pieces, uh, one with the chien coulee, and then uh, of course what's left over you can take a ghost print of, so two for the price of one. <laughs> so this will have to dry a bit as well. So set that aside. Now I think our other piece is ready now. And hopefully this one will come up. It seems to have, the bond paper actually seems to have picked up the color a bit more. Again, we got a bit of a sticky problem here. So the chicole really, um, with the methyl cellulose, um, so that's better, I think, with an etching press. Which I would love to have, but it's not going to happen. And my studio, I think we don't really have room, although I think I would make room if I had one. Okay, we have to stick that on, on there when we get the whole thing off. And if it's going to be stubborn, you might as well just use, you know, the matte medium. Um, nobody will know the difference. <laughs> Okay, we have our piece. And now we're just going to have to replace uh, one set came off. So some of them stuck pretty good, others didn't. And that might also be because there's paint on the surface. But because it's water soluble, I don't think it would have made much difference. And this one. Oh, this one had that nice pattern on it. So we have pattern, a little bit of structure, and we have a background. It's all working pretty good. And the bond paper actually picked up more of the stuff from the gel plate, which is good. All right, so here's our little creatures. Now for this piece. So this is our ghost print. You could probably even run another one. Just add a little bit of... Let's see if we can pull that last little bit off. A little bit, it's coming. Well, it's fine. There are white spots elsewhere, um, which is all interesting, including a little 
dots, which is really interesting. And there's some dots here and there. Uh, I could use maybe another layer of something a bit darker. Um, but look at how interesting the graphite, um, or the charcoal, sorry, is, uh, you know, that um, the lines, this background of scribbly lines is really interesting. And then the structure, the shapes, I think it's a successful piece. So anyway, Sheen Collet again, and um, a little bit of a ghost print. Try different colors. You might run another layer over this to do stuff with the halos. Um, we got halos probably because it could have dried a little bit longer, but it's all good. And this one, um, the bond paper actually worked even better. So I really didn't see any halos as such, even though this paper, while it was a lot thinner, this is deli paper. so. It makes a difference as to the size. Anyway, so much fun and uh, give it a try. Not that difficult. Um, I would use matte medium rather than methyl cellulose, which is probably difficult to get, although um, paper making um, supply houses will sell methyl cellulose. And also marbling uh, shops that have uh, marbling uh, supplies will sell me um, methyl cellulose because they use that as a sizing. So it's all possible, and some things could be easier than others. <laughs> you have to work with it, and that's what, uh, you know, doing art, uh, you know, doing printmaking especially uh, is fun. And, you know, if you're depressed because of these long days and not much sunshine, well, do some artwork. And, uh, you know, it, it gauges your mind, uh, keeps you busy, and stops you from worrying. So art making is very therapeutic. Give it a shot. So be sure and like and subscribe as always. Um, join us again in a future episode. We have all sorts of adventures here and lots of fun. So take care. Take care of your families. Be kind to one another. Bye for now.